Hey, welcome to the video that we have uh, going on right now called Adding and Subtracting Rational Expressions. It's good to see you here today. I hope um, you learn a great deal. This is a um, kind of a challenging section, but you have to remember a few key things when adding and subtracting rational expressions. Here would be a couple rational expressions that you are adding and subtracting. Um, Actually, these ones you're just adding. Let me um, point out that if we have one half plus three fourths, we do not have common denominators, so we cannot add those two fractions as they sit. We have to multiply one half by, um, let's see, one half by two over two, and what do we get? Two over four. One half is two over four plus three over four. And that's equal to 5 over 4. We are capable of doing this now um, because they have common denominators. So we get 5 fourths. So when we do rational expressions like up here at the top, we have to be able to have common denominators. And the first example I've given you is pretty simple because they do have common denominators. 4x is the common denominator. So, when we add them, the denominator is going to be 4x. Let's go ahead and combine some things here. Let's go ahead and add what we have on the top, 3x cubed. It does not combine with 8x squared or negative 1 because 3x cubed has an exponent of 3. So, we've already used 3x cubed. Now look at 8x squared. It does not combine with negative 1. So it's a positive 8x squared. And then we have a negative 1. So that is our, that's how we simplify the expressions that we started out with. If it was possible, you would factor something out of the top. You should always try and factor something out of the top to possibly reduce it with 4 or x on the bottom, but in this case, nothing factors out of 3, 8, and negative 1, and nothing factors out of x cubed, x squared, and nothing. So you have the simplification right there. This one here is the same. Although it says minus, so you have to pay attention to minus. Do they have common denominators? Remember, denominator is on the bottom. Numerator is on the top. So if we look on the bottom of the fractions, the denominators are the same. So that is what we will have on the bottom. And now let's take 4x minus x. And if you think about it, it's probably written more like this, 4x minus x minus 2. And this throws a lot of people off because this minus outside, this negative outside, that negative 1, it has to go with everything inside. So really, we have 4x plus negative x, and then negative 1 times negative 2 becomes positive 2. And I guess we really didn't need those parentheses there. Because when we distributed that negative 1 to everything inside, it got rid of them. So what is 4x plus negative x? That's going to be 3x. And then we have the positive 2 right there. 3x plus 2 is on top. Okay, now... Here's where you have to, um, this box, I'm going to be erasing this box here in one second. Now this bottom, 3x minus x minus 2, can we factor it? Three, I'm sorry, 3x squared minus x minus 2. Two numbers that multiply to give negative 6 that add up to give you negative 1. Those two numbers are possibly 2, negative 3, 
Yes, that's true. So let's factor this. 3x squared minus 3x. That's what I'm getting, minus 3x from here. And I'm going to put plus 2x minus 2. This is from the previous chapter we were working on, on um, factoring quadratic trinomials, or factoring trinomials. What can you factor out of 3x squared minus 3x? You can factor a 3x, and that leaves us with x minus 1. And what can you factor out of 2x minus 2? You can factor out a positive 2. And that leaves us with x minus 1. Put your two parentheses together. We have 3x plus 2. And we have x minus 1. Now, the reason why we do this is because let's look at what we have here now. Our fraction was 3x plus 2 over top of 3x squared minus x minus 2. But we've taken 3x squared minus x minus 2 and have broken it down into this. So, for it on the bottom, I'm going to rewrite it down here on the bottom. 3x plus 2 on the left side. And x minus 1 on the right side. And what do I have on top? I have 3x plus 2 on top. And when you look at this now, you should know that from you know, simplifying rational expressions, 3x plus 2 and 3x plus 2 on top and bottom. And we can cross it off because it's multiplication between those two parentheses. We cancel it out. And our answer... We have, it uh, looks like we have nothing up there, but remember we have the 1 on top, and on bottom, x minus 1. So we have taken what we've started with, right here at the very beginning, combined, um, combined 4x minus all of this to get, 3x plus 2. And then once we combine those, we were able to factor out the bottom and cancel to simplify it even further. You should always be trying to simplify it as far as possible. So don't forget your trinomials. You should try and break down into two sets of parentheses. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one, look at the denominators. D plus 4 and 4 plus D. Now, you have to use some, uh, some of your knowledge on numbers. Uh, D plus 4, we're going to leave that one like that. But let's look at the one on the right. It's a positive 4, right? So because we have addition, we can change the... Um, the order of these. We can put positive D first, positive 4 second, and now you notice we have common denominators. So since we have common denominators, we know D plus 4 is our common denominator. And so let's go 5D plus 20. 5D plus 20. I don't want you to get in the habit of leaving this this way. I want you to always think, is there something I can factor out of either the top or the bottom? And if you look at the top, is there a number that goes into 5 that also goes into 20? 5 does. And so when we take 5 out of 5D, we're only left with D. And when we reduce 20 or take 5 out of 20, we're left with a positive 4. 20 divided by 5 is positive 4. And we still have everything on bottom. We can't factor anything out of D plus 4. 
But you should see something here. You should see that D plus 4 on bottom with D plus 4 on top, and we're allowed to cancel it off on top because it is 5 times D plus 4. And so what is our answer? Our answer is just 5. So what we start out with here in the very beginning, we'll simplify down to 5. Okay, this one here, we're getting to a problem now where the denominators are not, the denominators are not um, like. Let me, um, let me show you a quick example here of some things that you can do. Just watch this part. Let's, um, let's look at fractions here, right? Let's look at fractions with, uh, I want to go three. Let me go 3 over 8 plus 5 over 12. Now what a lot of people do is they see the denominator, so they'll, they'll multiply 8 by 12, and therefore multiplying the top by 12, and then they multiply 12 by 8, and then they they get common denominators. Well, let's go ahead and do this on the top. 3 times 12 is 36. Just watch here, remember. And on the bottom, 8 times 12 is 96. Plus, on the top, 5 times 8 is 40. On the bottom, 12 times 8 is 96. And when we add these two together, we get 76 over 96. This has to reduce. We can reduce this by 2. So divide each one by 2. I believe we get 38 over 48. We can still reduce by 2 again. And we get 19 over 24. Okay. That's one way to do it. I don't prefer that way. But that's one way to do it. Let's check out this other method here. 3 over 8 plus... 5 over 12. 3 over 8 plus 5 over 12. What number does 8 go into that 12 also goes into? 8, 16, so we're making multiples of 8. 32, 40, 50, 60, 70, 48, right? Yep. And then make multiples of 12. And do you see 96 on that list? No, you don't see 96 on the list because it's pretty large. But we do see 24, and we also see 48. Now, you always want to use the smallest one because if we use the smallest one, we don't have to reduce as much at the end of the problem like we did down here. So the smallest one we're going to use is 24. 24. So 8 times what number is 24? That would be 3. So then if you multiply the 8 on the bottom by 3, you've got to multiply the 3 on top by 3, and that gives us 9. On the right fraction, 12 gets multiplied by 2 to make 24, so 5 gets multiplied by 2 to make 10. Now that they have common denominators, we go ahead and add. 9 plus 10 is 19. 24 is the denominator. And you notice 19 over 24, we don't have to do any reducing. And this is the same answer we got before. Worked with larger numbers, and we had to reduce a couple times. So this is what we're trying, this is what we're getting to. Um, this is what we're getting to. Let me show you... with the example that we're working on, how we can find least common multiples like this, how we can find least common multiples. That way we don't have to do problems where we have to do a whole lot of reducing at the end. Do 
let me um, let me go ahead and still use this example here. Let me still use this example, and let's figure out how we can do this. So we're going to have three over eight, but eight I'm going to break down into two times two times two, and we're going to have five over twelve. 12 is going to break down into 2 times 2 times 3. These are the prime factors of 8 and 12. Well, our common denominator, our common denominator has to have all of these factors in it once. It has to have all the factors in it once. So what I always do is I just start with one fraction. It can either be the top or the bottom. In this case, I'm going to choose the top. Put all those prime factors there. 2 times 2 times 2. All the prime factors are there of 8. So we have them all. Now let's look at the prime factors of 12. What prime factors of 12 are not already in the common denominator? Well, how about a 2? Yes, there is a 2 right there. How about a second 2? Yes, there is a second 2 right there. And how about a 3? Nope, 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 don't see a 3. So we have to put it there. And so now all the factors of 12 are in the common denominator. All right, so now let's look at this. If I take these three numbers and multiply them together, 2 times 2 times 2, that gives me 8. If I take these three numbers and multiply them together, 2 times 2 times 3, that'll give me 12. So we have common denominators. So what is the common denominator then? What's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. And you might ask, why did I go through this long process of using prime factors to show you? Is because, you know, the, the problem that we're going to be working on, you're going to have to start thinking about some things like that. And so let's... Um, Let's look here. Um, let's say 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is the common denominator. And that's the common denominator. So let me go ahead and erase that one right there in the middle. Let me erase my scribbles here. Let's get back to the prime factors. So we had 3 over 8, and we had 5 over 12. So let's look at the, uh, let's look at the top fraction here. If we have 3 on the top, 3 on the top, what do we have to multiply it by? Well, that's what I'm about to do here. I cross off one, two, three, twos, because there's one, two, three, twos in the denominator. What has not been crossed off? What did I not cross off here that's still over here in the denominator? What's well, that three? So we have to multiply the top by that by this three here. And if you noticed, look at what we did over here. Look at what we did right here. What do we multiply 3 over 8 by? We multiplied it by 3. Just like we did right here. And now, down here at the bottom, there's a 2, there's a 2, and there's a 3. What did we multiply this denominator by that wasn't already over here in 12? We multiplied it by that 2. So what do we have to multiply the 5 on top by? We 
you have to multiply it by 2. And come over here and look. What did we multiply 5 over 12 by? Multiplied it by 2. And over 24, 9 over 24. You notice? 10 over 24, 9 over 24. This is how you use it in prime factorization. And um, this might be a little bit confusing right now, but we're going to start using that in some of these... Um, some of these examples here that we're coming to. That way you don't have to do a whole lot of reducing at the end. But let's go ahead and uh, clear this board off. And this is the point where you start writing down some things. Let's look at our prime factorization of 6x, which is just going to be 2 times 3 times x. Prime factorization of 8x squared, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x. So let's look at our, let's figure out what we have to have as a common denominator. As a common denominator. Well, let's go ahead and put all three of these factors up here. 2 times 3 times x. So we have all three of these factors there. And now, let's look at these factors of 8x squared. We already have a 2. Now, we don't have a second 2, so it has to go up in the denominator. We don't have a third 2 until we put it there. We already have an x right there. And we don't have a second x until we put it there. So let's look. These three numbers, 2 times 3 times x, will give us 6x from here. And if we look at 2 times x times 2 times 2 times x, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 x times x is x squared. So now we have all the prime factors for a common denominator. And now what are this what does this equal? 2 times 3 is 6 times 2 is 12 times 2 is 24 x times x x squared. And you might have been able to look at this 6x and 8x squared, you might have been able to look at this and been able to pick out that 24x squared was your common denominator. And, and I'm hoping that this is the point that you get to, is that you're able to do this without prime factors. Okay, so let's look down here. We're going to have 7 over 6x, and we have 5 over 8x squared. We know the common denominator. You might want to watch because I'm going to save a little bit of room between my equal sign and the fraction. Common denominator is 24x squared. Common denominator is 24x squared. What did we have to multiply 6x by to get 24x squared? What did we have to multiply 6x by to get 24x squared? Let's look over here. If you have a question on that, if you can't figure that up in your head, let's look over here. Okay, so here's the common denominator that I've just written right there. Common denominator. So what do you have to multiply 6x by? Well, 2 times 3 times x is 6x. What is left over? 2 times 2 times x, which is 4x. So that is what you have to multiply 6x by to get 24x squared. So therefore, you have to multiply 7 by that, and you get 28x on top.
what do you have to multiply 8x squared by to get 24x squared? Well, let's come over here and look. We had 2 times 3 times x was 6x. And then we had times 2 times 2 times x was able to get us 8x in there. All right, so let's look. 8x squared. What do you have to multiply 8x squared by to get 24x? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So we're going to cross those off. And x times x is x squared. So we've crossed off 8x squared in the denominator. And what are we left with? 3. You have to multiply 8x squared by 3. And by using these prime factorizations here, that's helping you, should help you to see what's actually happening here. So 8x squared times 3 is 24x squared, and 5 times 3 is 15. So now let's look at the problem that we have. The problem we originally started out with was that fraction plus that fraction. We have changed those fractions to look like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and, since it says add, we have like terms. Actually, I was just kidding. We don't have like terms. We have 28x, and we have uh, we are adding 15 to it. So common denominators is what I meant to say. We had like denominators. 28x plus 15 over top of 24x squared. I don't know if that's your final solution yet or not, or your final simplification, because you should check. Can you factor a number out of 28 that you can factor out of 15? 28... Um, Actually, 15 is going to be 1 and 15, 3 and 5. But we don't want to worry about 1. We know 15 doesn't go into 28 evenly. We know 3 doesn't go into 28 evenly. And we know 5 does not go into 28 evenly. So therefore, we cannot um, simplify 28x plus 15 any further. We can't factor anything out of that, so we're going to say that that is our simplified process. I know this is a um, this is a tough, tough, um, maybe challenging to get through. There's a lot of steps, a lot of thinking that has to go on. You have to um, kind of understand what's going on before I guess you can do it. So. I have a couple more slides here I want to help you out with, and then there's also another um, section on just, I think, 10 or 12 practice problems where I just work through them with you. So we're going to go ahead and move on with these last few examples before we move on to the practice video. Um, that'll be a separate video for you, though. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. Uh, it says simplify those two fractions. And now this is a little bit different because... We have a minus sign there. Um, this this isn't uh, this isn't like the last problem um, completely. It's close, but it's not like the last problem completely. What you have to understand here is that x minus one is in a parentheses, and x plus six is in a parentheses because the fraction bar groups everything together on the bottom, or and top also. So let's. Look at a common denominator. Common denominator. What is on the bottom of the left fraction? We can't we can't factor anything out of x minus one. So we're going to put x minus one on the bottom. What is the denominator here of the second fraction? You can't factor anything out of x plus six. I mean, if it was something like two x plus ten, or you could pull out a two and then have x plus 5, something like that. But x plus 6, you can't. So we're going to put x plus 6. So that's our 
common denominator. So now let's come over here. The left fraction, x plus 2 over x minus 1. Remember, save some room for your equal sign. And then the right fraction is 12 over x plus 6. Common denominator is x plus 1 times x plus 6. It's not a plus 1 there. It's minus 1, x minus 1. Common denominator, x minus 1, x plus 6. Okay, now we need to figure out what we multiply these fractions on the left by. So what did we multiply x plus 1 by to get the common denominator? Well, this one is kind of a little bit easier to see because we only have two factors. We have the left factor of x minus 1 and we have the right factor of x plus 6. Now I just caught myself. It shouldn't be x plus 1. It should be x minus 1. Alright, so nonetheless, what did we multiply x minus 1 by to get this denominator right here? Well, it's real easy. X minus 1 was multiplied by X plus 6. And so if you multiply the bottom of the fraction by X plus 6, you have to multiply the top of the fraction by X plus 6. And this is going to give us X times X is X squared. X times 6 is 6x two times x is positive 2x and two times six is positive 12. Now we can combine 6x and 2x to make a positive 8x. Okay. So now looking down at the next uh, fraction down here, 12 over x plus 6, what did we multiply x plus 6 by to get this common denominator? Well, here's x plus 6, and we multiplied it by x minus 1. So if you multiply the bottom of the fraction by x minus 1, you have to multiply the top of the fraction by x minus 1. And let's go ahead and do that. 12 times x... 12x and 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. And now we need to finish the problem. Let's finish the problem. Um, numerator of the first is x squared plus 8x plus 12 for top of x minus 1, x plus 6. Um, it says a plus, so we're going to be adding 12x minus 12, and then x minus 1, x plus 6. So let's look at uh, combining like terms here x squared, there's no other x squareds, so it goes on top. How about 8x? Positive 8x will combine with a plus, you're adding 12x to it, so we get a 20x. And positive 12, and you're adding negative 12 to it, which is 0 which is zero. So, you don't want to put the zero there, and we're going to look. Is there anything that we can factor out of the top? x squared plus 20x 
That's going to be x. So we're going to have x plus 20. And on bottom, x minus 1, x plus 6. If you look, can you factor, um, can you reduce? Can you reduce anything here? No, nothing you can reduce. x doesn't reduce with x minus 1 or x plus 6. And x plus 20 does not reduce with either one of those, x minus 1 or x plus 6 down there on the bottom. So either this will be your solution or this will be your solution. And I guess if you wanted, you could also have a solution that looked like this. Um, x squared plus 20x. And you would have multiplied this to get x squared, negative 1x, and positive 6x. Make a positive 5x. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. So either one of these three will be an acceptable answer. Probably, um, probably this one first, this one second, and this one will be third. Just because that's the order in which they go in. You should always try and factor something out like we did here and reduce if possible. So if you tried to factor something out and you couldn't reduce, then just go ahead and leave this as your answer. I'm just say that this is your answer. But if you automatically know you can't reduce anything, then that one would be your answer. This one just takes a few more steps to get to. Hey, a lot of writing there. A lot of writing. Please make sure you keep everything organized on your paper. Let's look here and see what we can do. Um, it is a subtraction problem, so we need to keep an eye on that. So let's figure out what a common denominator is. Let's take this denominator and put it in the common denominator. And 2n plus 3, you can't factor anything out of 2n and plus 3, so that'll be our second part of the denominator. Let's go ahead and find an equivalent fraction. All right, what did we have to multiply n plus 1 by? to get our common denominator. Um, well, n plus, n plus 1, here's n plus 1, so it looks like we multiplied it by 2n plus 3. And if we did that on the bottom, we have to also do it on the top. 2n plus 3. 1n times 2n is 2n squared. 1n times 3n is 3n. 6 times 2n is a positive 12n. And 6 times 3 is a positive 18. And we know that 3n plus 12n will make a positive 15n. All right. Now let's look down here at the bottom fraction. Our common denominator was n plus 1 and 2n plus 3. What did we have to multiply 2n plus 3 by to get the common denominator? Well, there's 2n plus 3. Looks like we multiplied it by n plus 1. And if you multiply it on the bottom, you have to do the same on the top. So distribute the 4 to everything. We get 4n plus 4. So now, let's go ahead and figure out what we have. 
we have, let me use a different color here, we have 2n squared plus 15n plus 18 over top of the common denominator. And I'm getting all this from here. And it says minus, so we're going to be subtracting 4n plus 4, and I'm getting it from this fraction, over n plus 1, 2n plus 3. Now since this is a subtraction problem, we distribute this negative sign it's either only on top or only on bottom, but remember, since we have to have common denominators, then we don't want to distribute it to the bottom. We want to distribute it to the top. So we have positive 4n times negative 1 makes a negative 4n, and a positive 4 times a negative 1 makes a negative 4, therefore making that subtraction sign a plus now. Let's combine like terms. We have our denominator, n plus 1, 2n plus 3. So, let's look. We have 2n squared. Now we have 15n plus negative 4n, which makes a positive 11n. And we have a positive 18 plus a negative 4, which makes a positive 14. Now, since we do have a trinomial here, we should try to factor that up into two parentheses. So, let me erase some stuff here. I'm going to erase... I will be erasing all this right here. Changing, uh, changing the fraction. So, if you need to, uh, if you need any of that stuff down, pause the video. If not, I'm erasing it. All right, so let's look at 2n squared plus 11n plus 14. We know 2 times 14 is 28 and 11. Two numbers that multiply to get a positive 28 that add up to get 11 is 7 and 4. So let's go ahead and see if we can factor 2n squared plus 7n plus 4n plus 14. What can you factor out of 2n squared plus 7n? You can factor out n. And what can you factor out of 4n plus 14? You can factor out a positive 2. This goes into one parentheses. And 2n plus 7 goes into the other. So what we've done is we have changed the top, 2n squared plus 11n plus 14, to become n plus 2. Let me slide all this over for you. We have changed the top to become n plus 2, 2n plus 7. And now let's look on the bottom. Our denominator was n plus 1. 2n plus 3. And can we cancel any of those factors out? Um, n and n and 2 and 1, they can't cancel out because they have to be exactly the same. We have 2n and 2n, but the 7 and the 3 are different, so those won't work. So you have your solution. It's either this one or this one. That's how you simplify those fractions. Let's move on to the next example. The next example we have these is equal to, can you factor anything out of 2x minus 10? Yeah, you can factor 2 out, right? So we have 2x minus 5. We've just factored a 2 out of there. 
So now what's the common denominator? Let's put this in the denominator, 2x minus 5. And now look at this denominator, x minus 5. Well, it's already there. Okay, so we don't have to put that this x minus 5 in a second time. Remember, we're trying to keep it simplified down so we don't have to simplify at the end. We should always check to make sure that we, uh, if we can or can't simplify, but we should, um, we don't have to put x minus 5 in a second time. So let's go ahead and look at what we have. We have x minus 2 over 2 x minus 5. And this one will not change because all of its factors are already in the common denominator. And there are no additional factors in that common denominator. No additional factors. That's the key. That's the reason why it hasn't changed. And now look at the second fraction. x plus 3 over x minus 5. And the common denominator, 2 over x, I'm sorry, 2 times the difference of x and 5 goes on the bottom. What did you have to multiply x minus 5 by to get this denominator? Well, he multiplied it by the 2. So you have to multiply the top by 2. And remember, that's everything on the top. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 3 is a positive 6. Problem says plus. So, I'm not going to rewrite these two fractions side by side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look here and I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms if possible. So, let's combine like terms. I have an x and I'm going to, it's a plus sign, right? plus. I'm going to add 2x to it. What's 1x plus 2x? That'll be 3x. I have a negative 2, and I'm going to add a positive 6 to it, and that gives me a positive 4, and then my common denominator on bottom. And you should be looking, can you factor anything out of the top? 3x plus 4? No, you can't. So you can either leave it like that, or if you wanted to clean it up, I call it cleaning it up a little bit. It's up to you whether or not you think that's a little bit cleaner. Either one is fine, but you should know that both of those are the same thing. And, hey, what do you know? There you go. I know that was challenging. I know that was a little tough, and that um, takes a lot of thought process, a lot of um, problem solving there. But you keep it in mind. Um, remember, I have one more video. I would suggest watching that at some point because this is kind of some challenging stuff. And if you watch the, the uh, practice video, I think you will be um, you'll be amazed at how much you you get. Well, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next trip.